Yeah, well, did you hear about Sal? No. Yeah, Sal had a major accident. He's not here today. <laughs> what? At Artie's show on Saturday night was the show, Art? Yeah, he fagged out. Friday. He's not here today. What a pussy. <laughs> Friday night was the he show. He needs a day. Well, Friday night in, in Tampa. He's been in the hospital all weekend. Well, what this, did he do? Again, this was one of those shows, like I said, this was like a real sort of a, a serious event. There was a Howard 100 event. Bubba was involved. Everyone who does stand-up on our show went down and was part of the show, which is a rare thing nowadays. So... <laughs> Yeah, Sal, uh, Sal got into a major... I think it was the Baba well, Booey angels helping out Gary for once. Because oh Sal hurt himself in the Baba Booey mask. Oh you know dear. that big Baba Booey mask Sal wears? <laughs> the, the head, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Gets up on stage and he starts doing the Baba Booey dance while Gary's out there on stage. <laughs> well, which actually probably Gary, helped Gary. Because actually, what happened, here's, that here's he the story. Here's what happened. I said to Sal, <laughs> Sal wanted to do the dance, right? So I said, why don't you come up at the end of my set, at the very end of the show, because it's like a song. People feel like it's a good ending, you know. You always end on a song, the showbiz rule. So he said, all right, I'll put the mask on. I'll come out at the end of your set and do it. So I did whatever. I did like 40 minutes. I said, hey, the most popular thing on Howard TV right now is Sal dancing in the Baba Booey mask. So we're going to play the song, and Sal's going to come out. So, of course, it took 10 minutes for the fucking song to come out. Right. The song comes on, Sal comes out, and they're going nuts. He's got the, <laughs> he's got the mask on. But this was in, like, a little mini arena. So they set up a, a stage that was about seven feet high off the actual concrete arena floor. Okay. And it's all darkness around the stage. So Sal's going from end of stage to end of stage with the mask, dancing like a jerk off. The crowd started to like it. So, of course, that feeds Sal. So he gets a little nuttier, a little nuttier. I see out of the corner of my eye Gary coming on the stage. I'm like, oh, perfect. This will be a perfect ending. Gary will do something, and that'll be it. So and he did something. Well, <laughs> it must have been like the gods or something, because I didn't touch Sal, and Gary didn't touch Sal. But Sal got Gary got an inch from Sal. Sal keeps going to the left and just falls off the stage oh, no. into the blackness, like into this abyss. I, and then I just heard a whap. Like, I don't know how far he fell. Wow. And my first reaction was, Sal, are you fucking all right? Are you okay? And he was writhing around the bait. Thank God he was moving, because my first thought goes to, like, my father. When I see somebody fall right. like that, you could Ooh. fall six feet, and it was a good seven feet on your head. Yeah. Dead fall. Didn't know it was coming. Picture that. Just right on the concrete. So everybody ran down and checked him out, and it turns out he broke his wrist bad. He oh. broke his wrist. Yeah. He oh. injured his ribs. He's at the doctor today because of his ribs. He has a huge... Huge thing on it. There. See, the stupid thing was Sal was Sal was so obsessed with doing this bit. Like I just talked to the guy in the garage, and, and he was saying that when Sal picked up his car, he showed the guy the the mask, and the guy at the garage even said something like, "Shouldn't the eye holes be a little bigger?" And Sal was so obsessed that he goes, "I'll do it." And then you come out and you whip the mask off and throw it to the audience. You're gonna love it. I'm like, you know, all right, whatever you want to do. But right. he want he. This was like his, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. But of course, I go to talk about that. Was first of all, it was like about 4,200 people there, nut nut bags, just a nutty fucking crowd. And I said, I think Sal's dead. They go. <sighs> They yelled. They were happy. They had seen it. Yeah. But then, of course, all they wanted me to do was the wild thing. So I said, why I fell off the stage? That got like a standing ovation. <laughs> His wrist is so, so did bust. Did you have time to get uh, Sal taken care of before the crowd needed more entertainment? No. Well, this was the end of the show. Thank God. If this had, uh, thank God we waited. Right. <laughs> happened I saw in the, the beginning. Pictures. I would have had to do an hour after that. I saw the pictures of Sal in the hospital, and I mean, literally, uh, they had to put a um, plate in his wrist. Yeah, he's fucked up. He's fucked up bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's really oh, he's lucky to be alive. Well, he made the mask himself. He's lucky he didn't snap his neck. Yeah, that's what I that's I was really scared I was going to look down and see something like that, man. But he was moving the whole time in pain, which right. it sucks he's in pain, but that's a good sign. And yeah. Sal and his wife have like the world's worst marriage as you witnessed here the other day when uh, Sal's wife paintballed him because It was a rough weekend for Sal between his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story where Sal was t- like still in Florida, and, and Gary goes, "Why don't you go home? You're, you're, you know, you've you've injured yourself." He says, "Quite frankly, I could get more rest here." Wow. He called Christine, his wife, and she, you know, they had Sal on like double doses of Dilaudid and Ooh. Vicodin, and nope. you know, he was in a lot of pain. So he threw up from all the medication they put him on. So he called up his wife and he told her, and she said, are you sure you don't have a stomach virus? And he said, no, I just told you. It's from medication. She goes, well, just in case you stay, you stay there, I don't want you giving the kids a, a virus. Oh, my God. She told him to stay the extra day. Yeah. So they have the world's worst marriage, That's I mean, horrible. officially. Big story of the weekend is poor Sal. I mean, he, he looked all right. But he, the so next he's day not the, here today? No. No. 
the no. next day at the hotel, he was in a wheelchair. He looked like uh, FDR yeah, but, but doing a fireside <laughs> chat. That's a whole, he didn't need the wheelchair. You know what I mean? Like, right. they put him in a wheelchair. He didn't need the wheelchair. Yeah, he they, didn't break his leg. They, before you know, the guy's, like, wheeling him outside so he could smoke and wheeling him around. But but he did have the He's arm. He's lucky to be alive. The yeah. arm was just like, he mm. really is how, I'm telling no. you, it was like a cartoon the way he went off the side. I, I was watching it from the side of the stage, and I thought he did it on purpose. I was like, you know, what's he doing? I thought he jumped down into the crowd. Oh, man. Shirley, what do you want I, to say? Well, you know, it's funny. It's right after that happened. You know, uh, uh, Joey Boots was down there, and we had a bunch of cameras filming it. And Joey turned around and panned to the crowd who were up against the rail. They, like, ran up to the rail to get a closer look. And it really was like gladiators. Like, people were like, Artie's going, are you, is he moving? And people are like, yeah! And like, yeah, he's dead! And, and, and uh, there were a couple what of kind vicious of people. Are you oh, and then we go out back, like, just to talk. Like, I went to talk to Gary, because Gary was really bummed out at first. He was like, man, this sucks. People are going to think right. I shoved him. And we go outside, and we're talking. And two seconds later, you hear a fan go, hello, murderer! <laughs> it was a weird thing too because Sal so it's so difficult with him to tell whether he's kidding around or not he right. makes the same as he made that face like uh, and we really couldn't tell if he was hurt or not and right. somebody said his wrist is broken and he held it up and it was you know Ooh. fucking twisted and shit oh, oh man uh, Neil you're on the air in Manhattan Woof. Yeah, yeah Neil go ahead yeah I examined Sal right, a minute after he fell and um, are you, you a doctor? Oh, wait, this is another oh, oh, This guy okay. rules. Yeah, like Artie, you, know. <laughs> you got to hear what Neil, we did to I'm him. I'm a psychiatrist, but I'm a doctor. So, right, you know, you know I'm doing without an x ray. He had a bad break. And uh, Sal wanted to thank Dr. Shankman. He's the guy in the audience who set the bone. And uh, Sal was on an All right, guys, what are you telling Who would have thought is... we had a doctor in the front row at one of our shows, an orthopedic surgeon? Thank God. In the front row. Yeah, but it's uh, amazing. Do we have pictures of this guy, Neil? Do we have pictures yeah, of what, or what happened to him? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the guy that they, um, this is <laughs> Rapid Nutty Fruitcake's manager. Yeah. So oh, he wears a toupee, and they get back there, and they make fun of him. They de him. him. So they just pulled, at one point, they just pulled his toupee off his head and started stomping <laughs> on this it. This is Sal initiated yeah. this, uh, okay? Oh, oh, there no. it is. Oh, yeah, now I'm watching. Two. Oh, they got me bad. Oh. Oh. God, I'm like a seat out psycho. <laughs> Do you want to see the uh, plugs, too? Oh, <laughs> my God. Hey, kiss the top of his head. <laughs> so Sal's abusing him, Howard. Hey, yeah. This is before the show. He's like, Bro. he pulls the guy's toupee off. The guy's head kind of hurt. Like a traumatic experience that Sal just initiated, throwing booze on his head. And then right after the show, this guy's saving Sal's life. Right. right. Yeah. And With in my the... car, Howard, in my car, I told Sal, this is what fucking happens to you for doing that to me. <laughs> we put the much. doctor's hair on Shuli, and he actually looked great. Like, it looked really good. Good. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I got to tell you something. I'm just watching the tape of you getting your wig pulled off. Your hair's not. Yeah. T- you you don't have a bad toupee. Oh, Howard, you got to see him live. Oh yeah, Neil, I love you, man. Not. But I've been wanting to tell you this since I've known you. Uh, well, fuck Artie, the toupee. You pulled, wait a minute, Artie. When you when I first wrote for you, you said you pulled some shit on me. You told me you wanted me to write for this phony gig. That you pumped me. You Neil, 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 you're off topic. To what about you keeping the yeah. toupee off? Artie suggested. I'm just saying, yeah, it might look better without the toupee. It looked natural. Well, it all stuff. Telling me that I told my wife that, and you know, my kids, and they're like giving me looks like. Yeah, but yeah. what? Oh, they're surely with a wig. Hey, yeah. yeah, you ought to lose it. Just shave your head. Ah, uh, we'll see. But anyway, Sal was signing autographs from my car, writhing in pain. Believe it or not, as we were leaving the parking lot. Some doctor was saying, some other doctor in the audience was saying that uh, that uh, this guy, Neil, didn't have any clue what he was doing. The guy All was right, like, but at least he's got some oh, medical bullshit. background. Oh, come on, Shuli. I'm just telling you, the guy was like, he'd offered to put ice on, and Neil's like, no, he doesn't need ice. He doesn't no, need I, ice. I, I'm the one who asked Tim Sabian to get the ice, which he couldn't eat. No, Neil totally helped the guy out. I mean, you know. Now, I mean, uh, Artie, you asked me if his wrist was I, I told you his wrist was broke. Yeah, yeah, I know. Remember you looked down at me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, thanks, great. Neil. Let's go to Edwin. Let a couple of people say hi in Tampa. Edwin. Hey, now. Hey, now. Uh, listen, I just want to thank Sal for the weekend. that he, he provided the best weekend for my wife and myself. First of all, for getting shot in his ass. My wife is, she's, she's not a big show, you know, the Stern, show, Stern fan, but she loves Sal and Richard. And, and then when he busted his ass on stage, she's, you know, she's just become a, she's a, she, well, how can we call it? A salaholic now. She just loves the guy. Well, Sal, uh, falling off the stage, he is lucky he didn't break his back. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, yeah, he made that mask. And one of the things, you know, they always say on Halloween yeah. is your kids are vulnerable. Right. Because they can't see out of those stupid masks. 
Now Sal's oh. got to do that at every show. He's got to take the fall right uh, off right. the stage. Yeah, now he's, he's got to uh, start a, to rig it up. Somebody, like, somebody finally thinks he's hilarious. It's like Daffy Duck. Uh, you know, he can, he can only do it once. <laughs> well, right. if he is this the start of him becoming a, a you know addicted to painkillers because of all the falls he had to take? Like Chevy Chase, yeah. John Boy, you're on the air. I'm John Boy, and I'm a salaholic. All right. Yeah. Uh, this guy has been stepping up to the plate, Howard. He, I think he's bucking for a raise. I mean, <laughs> he is great. He is great. <laughs> it's a contract year. Uh, just Sal arguing with his wife is 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 good enough for me. Oh yeah, uh, and his songs. I mean, forget about it. Right. I wonder, um, John Boy, what's this? When a guy gets shot with paintballs in his ass, the way Sal did. I, the picture's on HowardStern.com, by the way, for that other fan who was um, really anxious to see it. He could probably still catch him. Yeah, there's the video. Boy, Christine is so cute, too. And uh, what were you saying, uh, sir? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm saying, Sal, could Sal sit down and take a dump after he was paintballed like that? Well, let's ask the only guy that would know that, Richard Christie, because I heard he had to wipe his ass all weekend. Oh. You're probably telling the truth. And the next time... You guys do that. You should fill those paintballs with uh, Richard Spitz so it doesn't hurt so bad. Yeah. No. Something Sal idea. would be used to. <laughs> All right, John Boy, thanks. Hey, no problem. I'm always here for a good idea, you know. All right, John Boy. You know, I think, uh, you know, that piece of tape on Sal's ass looked retarded, but could you imagine? I wonder if that actually happened once where one of those paintballs went up a guy's ass. Sure. Well, you know, he was very smart <laughs> to do that. I didn't think it was important until you saw what was happening with the paintball. Oh, forget it. Yeah. Uh, let's go to George. George, you're on the air in Lakeland, Florida. That's where Artie and the whole gang uh, appeared this weekend to some 4,000 people. Hey now, hey now. Had a good show. It was okay. I'm, I'm not sorry I went, but I wouldn't go again. Really? Why is that? Well, partially it had to do with the arena. They had like two bars open for the whole show, <laughs> and they cut the they cut the bar line as Artie was hitting the stage. Yeah, that ain't a good idea. No, because then they get mad. <laughs> they're, 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 like I'm drinking on stage, they're not drinking. <laughs> exactly. Why you would they cut the bar? Because they want people to sober up. I think because you're the closer. Well, you know, they're doing this at baseball games now, too. You can't drink at all after the seventh inning in a baseball well, game. Well, because guess... people get in their cars, and then they're right. responsible. Yeah, they drive away from the arena. So right. much crazy shit happens at the end of uh, sporting events, they figured out, because, you know, it's that extra mile of boozing, and, and I guess it spilled over into events like this. Yeah, but it lasted from the time you walked into the arena. You had, like, a 75-person line to stand in. Like that an hour-long line. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you do what Artie does? Artie, when Artie goes to a game, he has four or five Jack Daniels delivered to his chair <laughs> so that uh, he can drink there through was, all the way, all the way to the end of the game. There was no waiter service there. You yeah, had but I mean, so if you get online, then you order like 10 Jack and Waters. That's and the other fucked up thing. Now they have limits on what you can get. Like one Boy, per they person. Got you at every turn. I, I remember. Sh checkmated. One, <laughs> one time I went to a Yankee game, I sat in the left field bleachers. I was in the 11th grade. Uh -huh. The guy in front of us ordered 64 beers. <laughs> <laughs> 64 fucking, and she had to pour them. 64 beers. 64 yeah, fucking crazy. beers. How does he carry 64 beers? Well, he had buddies there. He just was handing them off to him. I guess why, why do fights happen in the bleachers, you know? Yeah. 64. I noticed Artie couldn't smoke on stage either. Nah, nah. There's one, one, <laughs> place, one place you can smoke now is Las Vegas. You can't smoke inside anywhere. Even if you're the performer. Were, Even if you're the, were, well... Unless you're Keith there Richards. Were state troopers there, like all the talk about asking for coke from stage, that just wasn't going to happen. And I'll tell you something else too. Shuly, Shuly bombed. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh yeah, he did. He got he got chased off the stage. Shuly, <laughs> you bombed.